Faye's reign was once the poster boy for anything Call of Duty related during 2012 to 2016. He was famously known for his trickshotting skills and live commentary videos of bringing in 50 million views a month until the dawn of the clout era where he stopped making Call of Duty content altogether. Following this, his life would take a downward spiral from depression, resulting in having severe nerve damage and almost being completely paralysed from the waist down. This is the tragic tale of Faye's reign. Faye's reign or Norden Chat was born on the 29th of May 1996 in Toronto, Canada. He would upload his first video, Let It Rain, in the middle of 2011 showcasing his Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 trick shots. He would continue to post videos every other day, ranging from 10 seconds long to 3 minutes, and a year later in September of 2012 he was approached by Faze Clan to become a member of their team. Faze Clan was known for having the best trick shotters in the game and was seen as the final milestone in any Call of Duty player's career. So naturally his signing came with a lot of pressure to not only perform in game but also also on YouTube. Rain was clearly an extremely talented player, and six months later after his introducing phase Rain video was uploaded, he would start his trickshotting live commentary series which featured a mixture of his trickshotting skills and a general commentary over his gameplay. This is a new series I'm doing to my channel, and I'm gonna see how this goes. Uh, I haven't really seen videos like this done before. Due to the montage videos featuring no personality and were entirely about the player's skills, fans were drawn to the idea of learning more about the person they had been watching for over a year without any insight into the person behind the screen. Now his live commentary videos were performing extremely well. In fact, they were doing so well that his montage style videos were trailing far behind in views. At this point, Rain had come to the realization that instead of creating content that took days to produce, he could upload a 7 minute video of him playing mixed with some commentary and the videos would perform surprisingly well. Fast forward to November 27, 2014. Rain announced that he was leaving his family home in Canada and moving to the New York FaZe house to create content with other members from FaZe. At the time, the idea of a content house was unheard of and the whole concept was a big gamble for FaZe. However, it didn't take long to know that the move was a huge success. Due to having several members of FaZe all together in the same house, fans of their individual channels would be effectively combined, which allowed for huge growth and success on their channels. Roughly six months after moving to the New York FaZe house, Rain would begin to upload daily to his vlog channel Norton Shat. Rain was uploading so much content that it was no surprise when he uploaded his video My New Car and stated that it was the first of its kind in America. In the video he collects the car but also reflects on his journey from dropping out of school to making his purchase of his Audi R8. Out of all the FaZe members at the time, Rain was by far the most subscribed to and had become a part owner of the company due to the attention he was bringing to FaZe's brand. Now if you're unaware of the way that Call of Duty games are released, it's a yearly rolling release of one game a year and with that comes changes to the game's mechanics. Rain had expressed his feelings multiple times for the games to follow behind Black Ops 2's release, saying that he didn't like the way that the games played and how the weapons felt. Rain would continue to post Black Ops 2 videos years after it was released. However, it was evident that the game wouldn't last forever, and this meant that the majority of the FaZe members stopped posting Call of Duty content altogether. The channel was performing better than ever. However, on the 19th of July 2016, Rain would post his most viewed video, Vaplord Nord Goes to VapeCon, which was a turning point of his YouTube career. Today, the video sits at just under 27 million views, but changes to YouTube's advertising guidelines meant that Rain's revenue would fall drastically. With YouTube being so hard on this too, it's really had me in like a rut. It's been bad, but I have not been getting paid for my work. Like my YouTube videos that I've been posting, like they've been claiming extremely bad, even though they haven't been any like, ed like you know, suspicious content. Like they haven't been like age restricted videos or anything or haven't really contained too much. Like they're pretty much similar videos to like my roommates and they're claiming fine, but mine aren't claiming, you know what I mean? So that has been kind of rough for me because it's like, I'm like, I'm not even kidding. Like the last three, four months, my channel has made less than 10%, less than 10% of what it was making a few months ago. And, and the way it makes me feel like before you guys comment, oh, so it's all about the money, should have knew it. Before you say something so unbelievably stupid like that, it feels as if I'm being treated unfairly. You know what I mean? No person out there can be like, nah, bro, I'm gonna do it anyways. All your roommates are getting paid, the, and I'm not saying I'm jealous of my roommates right there, but all my roommates have been getting paid the exact same thing, and, but yet the videos that I make, you know what I mean, like they don't claim. How's that gonna make me feel, man? That makes me feel like I'm being mistreated or not being treated the same way, or you know, that it makes me feel all these kind of things, and it's like, for what? For me being myself? At the time, YouTube was changing to be centered around more family-friendly content, and Rain didn't want to change who he was or what videos he posted just to be at the mercy of the algorithm. In July of 2017, Rain posted a video titled Why I Quit YouTube. In the video, he states that he didn't care about the drop in revenue for himself personally. However, he was worried about being able to support his family and making sure that they were taken care of. Like, people take it as the money, but like, you don't understand, like, it's not just the money. It's not like, I'm not getting paid for my videos, so I'm not gonna, it's not like that. Like, it's really not like that. It's like, I take care of a family. Like, how are people not getting that? They're looking at it as like, I'm selfish and I'm doing it for myself. You wanna hear something that broke my f 
heart that like literally she knows obviously that my CPM isn't good like my mom knows everything right so she lately for some reason she's been telling me not to give her money because like obviously I retired my mom and everything she's been telling me like no 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 don't pay me um I'm, I want you know you're not, you're not earning money off your YouTube videos right now I want to go get a job are you kidding me like I've had my mom retired since 2014 and she wants to get a job now because of my CPM even though I could very well afford to pay her and she knows that but she's just like she's too like afraid she, she wants me to keep my money she wants everything for me she doesn't like that it breaks my heart like this is everything everything I do is for my mom my family everything you know what I mean it's like it's for them I do it for them. A few months later, Rain would talk about his reduction in revenue and how it had returned to its previous state after four months of posting videos. He also talks about how he saw the reduced revenue as a blessing in disguise, as it allowed him to reevaluate his situation and decided to stop daily uploading to his channels. He felt that he was making content just so he would continue to upload daily, and felt that the quality of his videos had started to suffer as a result of this. He states that he became obsessed with checking the performance of his videos, and it affected him mentally, which led to his happiness suffering as a result of it. Rain would go on to take a four month break from YouTube and posted an update video in March of 2018 until he took another break for four months and in July of 2018, Rain uploaded a video titled The Truth About Me. He talks about his difficulty of expressing his feelings on YouTube as he would always be greeted with negative comments saying that he didn't have an opinion due to his financial situation. It was hard really to talk about like the way I felt because every time I'd say anything about how I feel, shut up, you got money, you drive a McLaren, you got a Tesla, shut the fuck up, you're not entitled to have your own feelings. And it's like, damn, bro, I really wish making money would, like, help me, like, get over the feelings that I've had my whole life, but it hasn't. Maybe it will for you, but it didn't for me. He would go on to talk about his experience of self-harming himself in April of the year during his break from YouTube, and as a result of this, he would end up in hospital and eventually a psych ward. Come April, mid-April, I had a, my worst mental breakdown, like, of all time. Like, I, I went through them, like, pretty much every other day, like, every, if not every day. Some shit happened, I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, self harm you know. Ended up in the hospital for a few days, and then I ended up in a psych ward. Rain stated that the reason for his mental breakdowns were the result of having his everyday routine taken away from him as a result of his revenue reduction and lack of motivation to create content due to YouTube's changes. So losing the one thing that made me happy was hard. You know, YouTube was a huge part of my life. Like, it was my routine. It was what I did every single day for years and years and years. I got to even, like, like, I never even thought about this till I started talking to my therapist about it, which I go to therapy now because, you know, for the first year that I was doing everything, I didn't because I just wanted to try to deal with my problems by myself. But, um... I realized that I can't. He would go on to relapse in terms of his mental health following his return home from the psych ward, but would seek therapy to help cope with his mental health. Rain returned to posting videos, but in December of 2018, he uploaded a video explaining why he was leaving the Faze house. He said his decision was due to him living in the same space that he was working in, as well as not wanting his personal issues to affect other people living at the Faze house. He would move back to Toronto, Canada following him leaving the Faze house, and Rain looked like he was slowly returning back to the happy version of himself. However, one year after leaving the Faze house, Rain posted a another video titled Dear Everyone, where he talks about how he felt lost as a person and was worried that he would never be able to live up to his previous successful self. But I do want to be better. For a long period of my time, I didn't want to be better. I was okay with giving up. I was afraid to fail again. I did so well at such a young age. I was afraid I could never live up to that again. And it's not even just about the YouTube numbers. It was about the passion and the motivation and just like, my drive to do what I did. And I lost that. And like, I just, I guess I feared that I would never have that again. So I guess that's why I've been depressed, suicidal, whatever you want to call it. Four months later, in March of 2020, Rain was back with his fellow FaZe members at their new house in Calabasas, Los Angeles. Rain stated that he had found new motivation in himself and was excited for the future. I am so happy to be back. I'm so happy to be just in the vibe with things, be around everyone, create videos. Like, I'm actually motivated again, like, truly, truly motivated. However, his whole situation was short-lived, as one month after moving back to LA, Rain became sick. Rain was unable to make videos because of his illness, and after realizing how much time had gone past while he was sick, he quickly became depressed and started to take multiple drugs such as Xanax and Percocets. Rain began to threaten his friends at the house and was in need of help. This meant that FaZe deemed it necessary to remove Rain from the house and offered to put him in an apartment. Now, due to Rain being by himself, it only got worse for him, and he would go live on Instagram from his apartment showing off what he was taking to his viewers in an attempt to kill himself. There are multiple videos of Rain online in this state, but on the one occasion, two of his friends from the New York Faze House, Faze Nikon, and Faze Tico visited him during his live stream and confronted him. Who the f's out my door? Bro, you can't come into my crib. Bro, you can't come into my crib. Bro, don't come into my crib. Don't come into my crib. Bro, what the f? Text me. Just text me. Bro, you're on live. Bro, get the f out of here. Nikon. I'll call the police, bro. 
We just need to talk to you. That's bro, it. Bro, why y'all pulling up on me? We're here to help, bro. We what the fuck's wrong with y'all? We want to help you. Mean? Bro, like, why y'all pulling up on me? Like, bro, bro, we're literally. And like, you forced your way in. No bro, respect. Bro, everyone is worried about you. Bro. I don't care if you're worried, bro. I'm a grown man. I'm 24. Yes, no, it does. It's nothing, bro. What am I doing? Getting fake and shit every single day is cool? What? Faking videos every day, every day is cool? That's not even a part of this, bro. You're showing drugs to to kids. Alright, I'm done with that. I'm sorry. No, I, but you're not done with that. Uh, kids, I don't have kid fans. I haven't had fans in years. You don't have kid fans? I do not have kid fans. You don't have fans that are under the age of 18. Man, a couple, bro. Oh, fine, bro. Bro, yeah, I, I have to now. The live stream ended shortly after, and Rain would post multiple tweets for the following months until the video was posted to his channel titled "I've been in a wheelchair for seven months, and this is why." Rain talks about how he's seen some of the best doctors in LA over the last seven months. However, they were unable to diagnose him for some time. Rain believed he had toxic neuropathy, which is due to nerve damage caused by toxic substances. However, he stated in a video in May of 2022 that he was diagnosed with complex regional pain syndrome. This left Rain in a state of paralysis from the waist down as he suffered loss of his motor functions and was unsure if he'd ever be able to walk again. He described the pain as a constant shocking, stabbing and burning sensation, leaving him in severe pain and was visited by the police multiple times in his apartment after neighbours were worried about the sounds coming from his apartment. <laughs> Now, due to Rain being unable to leave his apartment without assistance from others, he would start live streaming over on his Twitch channel playing Call of Duty Warzone. He stated that live streaming gave him something to do and distracted him from the pain he was constantly feeling, to a point where he said that live streaming saved his life. Wish, I wish you actually knew how much streaming meant to me. I wish you actually could understand that it has saved my life. It has actually saved my life because I, ne I never have been excited for the future or thought about the future in years. Like ever since I really stopped YouTube in 2017, I have never, I've been like trying, but I've been like, essentially faking it, just like trying to not feel that way, but that's how I felt. Streaming, talking to you guys every single day, and just having you guys there for me, it's an amazing feeling. Rain would go on to post a tweet on the 20th of August 2021, saying, one year drug free. Now Rain has stated in a video from September 2022 that he now uses cannabis as it helped him deal with his own mental health, and has released a brand called Recovery, selling his own strain of cannabis. Today, Rain is able to walk again after multiple sessions of physical therapy, and is focused on helping others who suffer from mental health and addiction. In recent months, Rain had gone quiet online and would stop posting to his Twitter and YouTube channels. However, in his two years drug free video, he mentioned at the start of the video that he was dealing with a situation behind closed doors and that he was holding back from talking publicly about it. But there's this situation I'm kind of dealing with that has been f***ing up my life for a little bit and it's been like a pain in the ass while I've been recovering and everything and it's just been a very bad situation for a very long time for me. I don't know whether I want to talk about it publicly and try to resolve it that way or just keep, you know, dying inside and dealing with all this every single day. I don't know. I just want people to know the truth. Three months later, in December of 2022, Rain posted a video to his main channel for the first time in 18 months titled Exposing FaZe Clan. Rain talks about how he helped build the brand from such a young age, and that when FaZe brought in management to help run the company, they started to sell the brand's image to make money and would milk it for all of its worth. Well, he's only doing this because we owe him money and he's mad. It's, they do owe me money, yes, and they haven't taken care of me, yes, and the money that I bought the Counter-Strike team for it took him six years to pay me back, yes, I never got a dollar or a brand deal, yes, that's all to me. They're going to say that, and that is a frustration of mine, but I obviously held that in for years. This is a lot deeper than that and a lot of my brothers don't see the actual issue here. They are being taken advantage of. I have to be careful with what I say. Oh, it's yes, I did get over, but that's not it. And what made me think about it is like, dude, if I'm one of the biggest shareholders, I'm one of the founders, I'm one of the main people of this brand, and they're gonna fuck me over, like, who else won't they do that to? It's the corruption in the background, it's people that get involved that aren't part, like, they're not like us, bro. And that's the reason I'm fighting so hard, is because I'm fighting for the future me's. People that are like me, people that sacrificed their life, their childhood to do this sh and to build this sh they deserve what comes, not the people that were talking shit about us 10 years ago saying you guys are wasting your time, then come in now and own most of the shit and give themselves what they want, take advantage of us because we're dumb and young and don't know business like that. I don't want that to happen to you guys. I care about what it did for the community. I care about how it just opened up so many doors for a lot of people for different things. I think it's beautiful and I want it to always mean that. I don't want these people to come in and ruin the brand that I sacrificed my childhood for. I don't want people to come in and just milk it and do collab after collab that do bad by the way, but it's just like, they think the logo has a fan base, like the logo is a person, everyone's like, oh my god, I can't wait to see the logo, no, it, it, the logo represents a collection of people that make people feel a certain way, that's what the logo was, 
Bye. Now, Faze became a publicly traded company back in July of 2022, and controversy like this has the potential to bankrupt the company. Rain would go on to post to his Instagram a three-part text post calling out some of his fellow Faze members for selling out and just taking money from management to keep quiet. He also states that during his recovery, he was never visited by his friends for six months, even after all he had done for them all over the years and felt betrayed. In his video, he states that he wanted to explain more about the situation, however, he was more than likely going to face some sort of legal action over what he had already mentioned throughout the video. Now, Faze as a whole have fallen into somewhat of an irrelevancy due to their original audience growing up and moving on from the brand, and it's sad to see the people I grew up watching on YouTube change so much. Is it due to them moving to LA and mixing with shallow clout chasers and backstabbers? Maybe. But I would definitely say it was the beginning of the end. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out one of these videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.